Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to use this business calculator. I'm gonna be making a series of videos on the content of a business math course following this particular textbook, Business Math, a step-by-step -step handbook by Jay Oliver. And that textbook uses this calculator, which I'm sure other business math textbooks do as well. This is the Texas Instrument BA2+. Plus and we're gonna look at some of the functions and default settings in this video. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Texas Instrument Business Analyst Calculator, BA2+. And we're going to take a look at the default settings for this calculator as well as certain functions. Let's start by turning our calculator on. And you will notice that it the display says 0.00. That's because the default setting for this calculator is to always round off to two decimal places. So it will always show your answers rounded off to two decimal places. They will be stored to more decimal places than that, but they will just show the answer or the value rounded off to two decimal places on the display. If we wanna change that or any other format settings, we're going to use the function second and format. Second and format. And the first thing that it tells you is the number of decimal places. You can see that the default is two. It's telling us it's set for two. I can change that to any number. For example, I could set it to four and then we press enter. Now it's always going to round my numbers off to four decimal places. I personally like a floating decimal point. So what I'm going to do is change it by entering a nine and that changes it to a floating decimal point. So it, it moves on the display depending on how large or how small the number is. However, I will never see more than 10 digits on the display. Let's quit this and I'll just show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go second quit. If I did one divided by three equals, it shows me more decimal places. However, the maximum number of digits that can be displayed on this display is 10. Let's go back into our formatting. So second format. I'm gonna leave it as a floating decimal point, And then I'm gonna use this arrow to look at what's next. The next option is for angular measurement. The two options are degree or radian. That really only matters if you're doing any of your trig functions, sine, cos, and tangent. So otherwise it's not gonna affect anything else. We're gonna leave it in degree mode. Then we have the date format. Default is the US, which is the month, then the day, and then the year, and that's standard for business. The other option is European. To get to another option, you press second and set. Now you can see it's day, month, year. I'm going to get it back to US, just go second, set again. Let's take a look at our next option. This is the number separators. So the period is used as a decimal point. The comma is used to separate groups of three digits. The other option is European, which is the reverse of that, so we're going to keep it in US. The next option is the calculation method. So this represents chain, and what that is is the calculator will do things in exactly the same order as you type them in. If you take a look at this expression, according to order of operations, we should do the multiplication first before we do the addition. And on a scientific calculator, it will do order of operations correctly. However, the default setting for this is chain rather than order of operations or algebraic operating system. So it's going to do the calculations in exactly the order that you type it, even though it's incorrect. So five plus two, and then when you press times, it does the five plus two, gives you seven and then times three and then equals. However, this is incorrect. Looking at that expression, it should be two times three, which is six, and then plus five to get 11. So in order to change that, let's just clear that first. In order to change to the algebraic operating system, which follows the order of operations, we're gonna go second and set, and now it's AOS. That's what we want. We're going to keep it at that and we're going to quit. Those are our options for formatting and we're done. So now I've set it so it has a floating decimal point. I kept it on the US date. I kept it on 
US number separators. I kept it on degrees, but I changed it to OAS, which I would advise you to do for the types of calculations that you're going to carry out. In order to clear things on your calculator, you have a couple of options. If you only want to clear part of, uh, of an entry, you can use your arrow key. So for example, if I went one plus and I went 45 and I meant, oops, I meant to put in 42, we just press this button, it goes back one, and we can put the two in and then press equals. So it corrected it without us having to start over. And that can be pressed as many times as you want. For example, if I had one plus five, six, three, two, and I wanted to change the, to five, seven, three, two, I can go back to there, seven, three, two, and then complete my operation. The other option is to use the CEC -E button. CE means clear entry and C means all clear. So if you press this once, it'll clear the entry or it might clear everything if you've completed the calculation. Pressing it twice clears the whole operation. So just to be sure you can press it twice. But if you only want to clear an entry, so if I went one plus 63 and I wanted to change 63 to 58, I could just clear the entry, put my new entry in and then go equals. So it doesn't clear the whole thing and I didn't do it digit by digit, I just cleared the whole number. But if I want to clear the whole operators, numbers, I would press this twice. Now I want to talk about memory on this calculator. You have a store and a recall button. You actually have 10 different memory locations, zero to nine. So when you store a number, you're going to have to remember where you stored it. So let's say I have a number 14 and I want to store it to use for calculations later on. I can press store and then I'm going to just put it in memory one. Now I can clear my calculator, totally clear it. That number is still there. If I go recall one, there it is. Clear it again. It stays there until I replace it with a different number. So if I went 47 and I stored that in location one, now I have a new number. And the way that I would use that, let's just clear this. Let's say I had 23 and I wanted to multiply by the number of my memory. I just go recall one and then equals. And I can stay there as long as I want. If I want to clear it out of the calculator totally, clear the display. So when you have a zero on the display, if you store that in your memory one, now your memory one is cleared. So like I said, you have 10 different locations of where you can store different numbers. Let's take a look at negative change sign key. So this allows you to change a positive to a negative, a negative to a positive, and the way you use it is after you've entered the number. So if I have 56 and I want to make it negative, I'll type it in afterwards. And then I can carry on and do whatever my calculations are. If I press it again, it changes a negative to a positive. Press it again, it changes a positive to a negative. Some other functions that you should be familiar with are your squared button, so x squared. If I wanted to square any number, I just put that number in and then square it. If I want to find the square root, let's say 25, I want to find the square root, you put the number and then the square root. If you're raising a number to a power other than two, you're going to use y to the x function. And the way you're going to do that is you put in your base first, then you're going to type that y to the x, and then you're going to put the power and equals. You will encounter negative exponents. So the way we're going to enter a power with a negative exponent is very similar. So you enter your base, enter your y to the x, enter the exponent. Remember with negatives, you have to enter the number first and then you make it negative and then press equals. You may have powers with fractional exponents. So the way we're going to enter that is our base 32, then our y to the x. There's different ways we could enter 1 fifth. You could use your reciprocal key. Just put a five in and then the reciprocal and equals. Or you could enter it using your parentheses. So 32 raised to the power of parentheses, one divided by five, end of parentheses equals. So either option will work. 
and the parentheses you're going to need that method if your numerator of this fraction is something other than 1. Let's say you have a fractional and negative exponent. Enter your base, 32, raise it to the power of. I'm going to use my parentheses, but you could use your reciprocal key. So parentheses, and then 1, I'm going to make my 1 negative, and then I'm going to divide by 5, end of bracket, equals. I could have done it with my reciprocal key, 32 raised to the power of, put in a 5, make it reciprocal, make it negative, and we get the same result. So I've mentioned reciprocal key, it takes whatever your number is and takes the reciprocal of it. So let's say we have 8 and you take 1 over x, that gives you 1 over 8, which is 0.125. We've talked about the parentheses, you use those as you see them or as you want to do grouping with your calculations. And you'll see more of that in future videos. Now let's talk about the percent key. There's a variety of ways that you can use it. One would be to find a specific percent of a number. And so in order to do that, enter your number, 1250, multiplied by 8%. When you press the percent key, it will change 8% to a decimal, but now complete the calculation by pressing equals. So 100 would be 8% of 1250. Another way that you can use the percent key is to change a ratio or a fraction to a percent. Let's say you got 56 out of 80 on an exam and you want to know what percent that is. So in order to do that, you just go 56 divided by 80 percent equals. So that would be equal to 70 percent. Another way that you can use the percent key is if you're adding a certain percent to a number. So if you're marking it up a certain percent or you're finding the sales tax, whatever the case may be. In this example, we have 650 plus 7 percent. So we're going to go 650 plus 7 percent. That tells you what 7 percent of 650 is. In order to do the addition, press equal to complete the calculation. Similarly, we could subtract a percent from a number. Maybe we're discounting a certain product. So in that case, we're going to go 650 minus 7%. Again, not 7% of 650, but to actually subtract it, we press equals. Another very useful function on this calculator is the constant function. So let's say you had a series of numbers and you wanted to do the same operation to all of those numbers. Instead of typing each of them in separately, what we can do is start with the first one. So we're going to go 20 times, and then we enter the number that we're going to be repeating, the constant. And let's make it a constant by going second k. And then we'll press equals. So that tells us what 20 times 1.15 is. Now don't clear your calculator because you want to do that same operation with the same number for the rest of these. So what we're going to do now is just go 30 equals. So it did that same calculation. 40 equals. There's our answer for that. 80 equals. And so on. So that can save you a lot of time if you're doing the same calculation on a series of numbers. It's possible to reset your calculator, and when you do that, it will clear not only the display, but all of the memories, all of the worksheets, all of the unfinished calculations, and it restores your calculator to default settings. In order to do that, you're going to press your second function and then reset. It's going to ask you to confirm, so you would press enter. If you change your mind, you can always go second quit. So if we go second quit, nothing happened. But if we go second, reset, and we want it to reset, we would press enter. Notice that my calculator now went to the default settings, which is two decimal places. And just to review how we change them back to what my preferred settings were, we go second, format. I'm going to change from two decimal places to a floating decimal point, so that'll be nine, enter. Then I'm going to leave it in degree mode. I'm going to leave it US date. I'm going to leave it US decimal point and comma. I don't want chain, I want AOS, Algebraic Operating System, so I'm going to go second, enter, and that changes it, and now I'm going to quit, second, quit. So now I'm back to a floating decimal point and following order of operations. We'll learn more about the other functions on this calculator as we cover those topics. Yeah.